You're listening to the Rod Langway Fan Club. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Rod Langway Fan Club Podcast. I am your host, Jeff Roman, with a couple of co-hosts, Mr. John Snowden. Hello, everybody. And Mark Chechnita. Howdy ho! You guys are looking a little bit different. You're sporting a little facial hair there. Yeah, well, you know, since Rod's birthday, it was kind of a big one. Uh, I haven't had the willpower to shave, so I thought I'd just uh, grow the stash in commemoration. You're looking good, Mark. Yeah, those of you that know me well know that I'm actually unable to grow a mustache. This is a Fu Manchu uh, fake clip-on mustache that I bought at the dollar store, actually. Well, you never know. I think mine looks pretty good myself. Yours looking great. If you don't mind me saying. Salt and pepper action. So it is a special day around here. Yes. uh, Now, normally, uh, in a regular year, we would hand out our mid-season awards. Uh, We call them the Mustache Awards in honor of the great Rod Langway. But this has been a weird year, uh, 56-game season, so we decided to wait until the end. Yeah, and the picture, I would say, is much clearer now, isn't it? I mean, I think we have a pretty good idea of who we're going to hand out the stashes to. I think so, but man, it was it was tough on a few of them there. It sure was. Well, should we get to it? Let's do it. Yeah, I was referring to the mustache, the old soup strainer. An awfully big mustache. How much has that hair seen in the months that it's been on my face? A mustache, a mustache. Now we both have said mustache, a mustache, a mustache. If you only got a mustache. This is what a real mustache looks like. I really love that uh, jingle. It's all about the stash. Yeah, I look forward to it every year. Okay, guys, where do you guys want to begin? I think we should start with the coaches. You know, they're the most mature, best able to grow mustaches. That's true. They got some doozies. Well, uh, I guess we should start with Joel Quenville then because he has a, a fantastic mustache. And he had a fantastic year as the head coach of the Florida Panthers. Absolutely. I mean, he's basically coached the Florida Panthers to perhaps their best regular season ever. Yeah, and they're in a great position going into the playoffs. Um, I mean, this is what they hired him to do, right? There was a lot of instability in Florida over the years. People were wondering when they would arrive. Well, I think they probably have finally arrived. Yeah, he's done a great job. He's had a few injuries, especially losing um, Ekblad. Carter Verhege also was hurt. Uh, In net, they lost Strieger for a little bit. He's kept them running. Yeah, uh, this team always had potential, but they finally realized it. You've got to think that Joel Quinville's coaching structure was a big part in that. Absolutely, absolutely. Who else we got there? Well, it's funny, a guy who people were wondering if he'd even finish out the year, uh, I'm talking about Mr. Mike Sullivan in Pittsburgh, turned things around in the second half, and they end up with a division title. Yeah, isn't that unbelievable? I mean, when Malkin went down, I think people were thinking like, "Uh uh-oh, this could be it for them. But it was the exact opposite. Um, What a second half of the season. Yeah, they cleaned house in the front office, but they kept the coach around, and it was a great call because he's proven them right, and looks like he might be uh, around for a while in Pittsburgh. Excellent season. Who else do we have in contention here? Well, a man who's never actually... I've never seen this guy with a mustache, but I think he'd look great with one. Rod the Bod. Mr. Brindamore. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. Rod Brindamore, he's in an excellent job for the Carolina Hurricanes as they claim the division title. Yeah, uh, still a relatively young coach, a relatively young team as well. Uh, but yeah, they were outstanding from start to finish, and uh, I think they're going to make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, he is a coach that I really do think gets the most out of his group. He's kind of the perfect fit and has been ever since he arrived there. Yeah, still young enough that he can kind of be one of the guys, um, and he played the game at such a high level that I think he draws a lot of respect for that. Sure. Any other uh, honorable mentions there? Well, speaking of second half uh, stories, we've got to talk about the Nashville Predators and their coach, John Hines. That team looked like they were dead in the water, ravaged by injuries, but somehow they got it back on the rails and they snuck into that fourth spot. Yeah, he did a really nice job for the Preds. You know, maybe we could mention Dave Tippett. Um, Sure. The Edmonton Oilers have been known for being pretty poor defensively, but I think this year they've kind of turned that around and they've been looking a lot better on the back end. Yeah, they've shaved off a, a, at least a goal a game, so he's really tightened it up there. Yeah, certainly a lot of worthy contenders, but there can only be one. Yes, so the mustache goes to... Joel Quenville. Yes, it has to be. I mean, he certainly has the best stash of the bunch. Yeah, we're rocking the double stash now. Yeah. Moving along now to the Peach Fuzz Award for the best rookie. Ah, uh, yes, the rookie stash. Uh, who are the contenders? Well, we've narrowed it down to, I think, two forwards and a stable of goalies. So I think the two forwards, we've got Kirill Kaprizov. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, he was the favorite going into the season, I think, to win. And, and, he, and he really showed that uh, he deserved to be that. 
the elder statesman as well. He spent a few years in the KHL, so he's no Sergei Makarov, but he did come in and I think 25 years old, so a little older than the other guys. 24, 24 yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then we got to talk about Jason Robertson as well. Uh, came out of nowhere, really. No one expected him to burst onto the scene like this, but he was outstanding, uh, second in rookie scoring. And a hat trick the final game of the season. Yeah, pretty awesome. unbelievable. And I think, you know, he was definitely the best rookie in the second half of the season, right? I mean, he was excellent, yeah, especially with, down the stretch. With all the injuries in Dallas, he was thrust into a pretty important role. Yeah. And then a couple goalies, yeah? Yeah, well, I think we have to mention um, Alex Nedeljkovic. Um, mm -hmm. Again, injuries with Peter Mrazek going down. He stepped up. Of course, the highly touted uh, rookie goaltender from the New York Rangers, Igor Shostorkin. Uh, just down the road, another guy though, right, Jeff? That's right, Ilya Sorokin. Yeah, yeah. For the Islanders, yeah. was also great this year. Yeah, yeah worked himself into a platoon uh, by the end of the season there. Some really nice performances all around, but actually I don't think this one is that difficult for us, is it? No. No, I think it's pretty obvious. It's a slam dunk. Okay, so the rookie mustache goes to... Kirill Kaprizov. There we go. Congratulations. Yeah, he's spectacular. He's electrifying. Probably best player they've had since Gabrick. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to see the Wild with a budding superstar again. Okay, well, great. What's next? Well, uh, I think we should go over to the guys that we never get to see their mustaches, uh, the goalies. Mm, okay. My favorite. I'd like yeah. to see a goalie paint a mustache onto their goalie mask, actually. That'd be kind of cool, right? That would be cool. Maybe for November they can do that. It was really tough this year. There's a lot of strong goaltenders this year. Yeah, you know, it's, I think, extra tough, too, because you had a lot of teams really watching the minutes of their goalies, so you didn't have a lot of workhorse goalies this year. Uh, well, there was one workhorse, though. That's Andre Vasilevsky. Yes, um, absolutely. He had a great season, even though he played so many games. He did have a slightly rough end to the season. They were trying to rest him a little bit because he was showing some signs of fatigue. But I think for the bulk of his uh, season, he was outstanding. Yeah, always uh, always among the league's best. Uh, I think we have to talk about the old dog, though, Mark andre Fleury. Uh, at the start of the year, it looked like he'd been cast aside for Robin Leonard. There were even you know, talk of him being traded at some point, but he took the torch and he ran with it, uh, playing maybe the best hockey we've seen out of him since his Pittsburgh Penguin Stanley Cup days. Yeah, good to see for him with all the controversy that they had in the playoffs and in the offseason. Yeah, the flower, and he's now, what, third all-time for goalie wins? Yeah, and he's, you know, at age 36, he's probably still got a few more good years left in him. Yeah. Who else we got? Uh, we have to talk about UC Saros. Uh, he was the best goaltender by far in the second half of the season and a big reason behind the Nashville Predators getting that last playoff spot. Yeah, he answered your question at the beginning of the season, who is UC Saros? Apparently, he's a pretty good goalie. A Vesna caliber goalie, perhaps, yep. yes. Yeah. Honorable mentions? Well, we talked about his counterpart as a rookie goaltender. I think that Simeon Varlamov was excellent, so we should mention him, although he did have a lighter lo workload, but not really his fault. Lots of shutouts. Yeah, led the league. I think Mr. Grubauer in Colorado was also excellent. Fantastic stats for Philip. Yeah, hopefully he can stay healthy. Uh, Colorado could make a cup run here. Yes, they'll need him. Uh, last year's Vesna Trophy winner, uh, Connor Hellebuck, was good, but I think maybe took a slight step back from last year's outstanding season. Well, you know, he's a workhorse. He, he played a lot of games. It's it's tough with the decor that isn't always the best. Well, I think we've probably named all the candidates. Uh, let's narrow it down to our final winner. Okay, and the mustache goes to... Andre Vasilevsky. Congratulations, Andre. Enjoy your mustache. You'll be receiving it in the mail shortly. Yeah, it's no Stanley Cup ring, but uh, it's it's prestigious nonetheless. No doubt. <clears throat> All right, sweet. So what is next? Well, I think next up we should do the Norris Trophy for okay. Best Defenseman. Sure. Who's going to get the mustache there? Lots of really worthy candidates. Um, let's start off with some of the, um, the also-rans. Drew Doughty had a great season at the start. He kind of tailed off at the end. He did. Yeah. He played a lot of minutes. The Kings were competitive, though. A lot more competitive than uh, people thought they'd be. Yep. Dougie Hamilton had a nice year in Carolina. Absolutely. Gotta love the Dougler. Yeah. Chris Letang. Uh, sometimes he gets a little overlooked there in Pittsburgh. He had a really fine year. And he yeah. stayed healthy finally, too. Stayed healthy was a big part of that turnaround. That's right. Staying healthy. Speaking of that, uh, Aaron Ekblad, it was a shame he went down. Yeah, he looked like a contender. Uh Horrible injury. Hopefully he can come back at 100% because he finally looked like he was living up to the billion as a number one pick. Yes. And a couple of great young D-men, um, Jacob Chikorin and uh, Shea Theodore also had nice campaigns. Yeah, these are names we'll be mentioning for seasons to come, I think. Yeah. yeah. Let's get on to the, uh, the real meat and potatoes here. Uh, Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman in Tampa Bay. 
such a stabilizing force. Um, you know, no Kucherov this year, Stamkos in and out of the lineup, but you've always got Victor Hedman back there. Uh, he does it all. Yeah, I mean, he's a big body. He can score, he can do He can do just about everything. And next, Kale McCarr. What do you think of Kale McCarr? I love Kale McCarr. I think he had a great season. Uh, the only defenseman to score at point-per-game pace this season, so that's something special. The most dynamic defenseman in the league, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. it's a shame that he missed some, some time there. I think that's going to count against him. It could. I think it probably will, unfortunately. Yeah, I think if he had played a full season and got all those points, if he had had, you know, 55 points or something like that, I think we'd be saying he's a shoe-in. And probably one of the biggest surprises this year, Adam Fox from the New York Rangers. What a season. Yeah, and what a second half of the season for Adam Fox. Uh, he had that stretch where he had that massive point streak, and uh, he's just so smart on the back end. He's not a physically imposing guy, but he just distributes the puck so well. And in the end, the Rod Langway mustache for best defenseman goes to... Victor Hedman. There we go. There we go. Yeah, maybe it's the safe pick, but I think it's uh, it's well chosen. Okay, well, next, uh, I think we have a very special award, particularly for this show. Uh, this is the Rod Langway Award. And there actually has been talk about there really being a Rod Langway Award for the best defensive defenseman. And uh, we're going to start the petition right here, right now, by giving our own Rod Langway Award yeah. winner. Yeah, I think it's time for an award for the best defensive exactly. defenseman. Exactly. We've been talking about it for a long time. We, we have? sure have. Yeah. So who are the candidates here? Well, we've got a bunch of candidates. I mean, last year's winner, if you remember, was uh, Jacob Slavin, and you heard it here first. Mm -hmm. um, he had an excellent season, and I think we can throw him into the conversation. But uh, there are some other very worthy candidates. Okay. Yeah, I want to talk about a guy that maybe doesn't get as much billing, uh, and that's Alec Martinez. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vegas Golden Knights were second in the league, stingiest team, second in goals against. Uh, he led the NHL with 168 blocked shots, and he was a plus 26. And while Petrangelo was out, he was their stalwart back there. Yeah, great season by, uh, for Martinez. He's really just fit in there. Jeff, I know you've got a guy on your mind that you want to talk about. Yeah, um, I would like to talk about Adam Pellick. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, from the New York Islanders. Because you look at the Islanders, they're such a stingy defensive team. And he played on the top pairing there with... Um, the other guy, the other P, Pollock. Pollock that, and Pollock. Yeah. That's right. They're a great law firm. And uh, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they would shut down teams. Uh, I thought he was great this year. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the, one of the bedrocks of that defense core. And yeah, they're... Best Stingiest team in the yeah, league, yeah. Best defensive team in the league. Um, but, you know, but there are some other guys. I mean, Charlie McAvoy had to step into quite a big role in Boston this year. Yeah. You know, they're losing Chara and losing Krug. Um, I know they thought Grizzly might be a pretty good defenseman for them, but didn't quite pan out, I think, the way they were hoping. Well, yeah, he was an offensive guy. And he was injured and he off was and on as yeah. well. Yeah, that's right. So I think McAvoy did a very good job of sta stabilizing that decor, and, uh, you know, Boston was all the better for it. Mm-hmm. I think another really, really underrated defenseman is Essa Lindell. And, you know, the Dallas Stars, they fought valiantly for that last playoff spot. They were just decimated by injuries. And Essa Lindell is such a dependable guy on the back end, kills penalties, and just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, he, he's solid, no doubt. But, uh, you know, there must be a winner in the end. So who will our winner be? And the mustache goes to Adam Pellick. Yeah, not the sexiest name, but... Uh, the New York Islanders are not a sexy team, but they get it done. And when it comes to defensive defensemen, there's nothing sexy about them, but every good team needs them. Well, that's, that's, right. that's right. I mean, I think the Islanders don't get enough credit. It's nice for them to get credit for their defensive play. This is a good opportunity yes, for, I, to give it to them. I hope Rod would be proud. Rod is proud. Yeah. He told me. He did. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, now we're down to our last award. Is that right? Yeah. Ooh, the granddaddy of them all. Yeah, this is the mother of all mustaches, or maybe the father of all mustaches. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the grandfather, perhaps. <laughs> sure. Um, this is the, the MVP. Mm-hmm. And who are the candidates? I think I feel like we're going through the motions here, guys. I think everyone the knows there's not a lot of suspense, but sure. Let's name a few other guys. Sure. Who are the other guys? We to well, the okay. Um, I mean, Austin Matthews. We do have to mention yeah. his season. Wow. What a goal-scoring season he had. I mean, he's the best pure goal scorer in the league. Yeah, I think this season is the one where he overtook Ovi in that realm, and wow, what a shot he's got. Mm -hmm. Sid the kid, not a kid anymore, but uh, wow, yeah. still got it. 
He still does, man. He got the Penguins to the playoffs and the first in the division, and Malkin missing all that time. What a season. Yeah, I mean, we've known Sid can do this, but he continues to to wow. I think we forget that, you know, he's been in the league for so long that we think that he's in his mid to late 30s. The guy's still not that old. You know, he's like 33 years old. That's... He's still got a lot of good hockey left in him. Yeah, and smart players tend to play well late into their careers. How about another guy from Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, Nathan McKinnon? Also great season, no question. Yeah, he's surrounded by so much talent in Colorado, and he's the best of them. But um, he was good, but I don't know if this was a great season for Nate McKinnon. Now, do we have a drum roll here? I feel like we there's a guy whose name is on the tip of our tongue. Yeah, well, let's let's take a minute here and think about it. We'll get the drum roll going. Okay. Apparently, this award must be sponsored by Listerine or something. Yeah, John, I think you got the wrong sound effect. It's close enough, right? Yeah, I liked it actually. (laughs) Okay. Well, I mean, I think we all know who the winner is, and the mustache goes to. Connor McDavid. Surprise, oh, surprise. man. Yeah. He is out of this world. Um, and he got to 100 there. That was such an amazing night. He had uh, had to get four points and he did it. And he did it. And I think everybody was kind of expecting him to do it, right? I think it was just, it was just a matter of course. He went out. He did it, and uh, he looks special every time he's out there on the ice. He really does. He he just wows every shift. He looks like a player on a video game. He really does. He doesn't look like he's human out there. It's terrifying when you're you know cheering for the other team that he's playing against because the minute he's on the ice, he's just all over the place, and all it takes is a split second, and he's gone. Yeah, he's gone, and then his release is also so fast. I mean, he can skate like the wind, and he can get the puck off his stick into the back of the net in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And the vision and the poise, it just he's got it all. And I think the only question left is, can he do it in the playoffs? Yes. That's the last thing for him. Yeah. yeah. And he's going to get a chance to show it this year. Yeah, I feel privileged watching him play. I really, I really do. do. He's like a superhero at the height of his powers. Well, is it the height, though? That's yeah. the other thing. I mean, you know, he's got years to grow still. He's still getting better, and that's the scary thing. As long as he stays healthy, I don't see anything stopping him. And now he has a uh, mustache to add to the uh, trophy collection. Yeah, it's not his first. He can uh, take all the mustaches and weave them together into one giant stash. Of course. Yes. Well, I think that uh, about does it, yeah? Yeah, we will be back at you in less than a week. Playoffs are around the corner, so we're going to be breaking down all of the matchups in our playoff previews. Stay tuned to our SoundCloud, to our YouTube, to our Twitter, to our Facebook, and we'll be back at you before you know it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I, I, I hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had yourselves a time. Hope, hope you had time, 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 time.